Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day, and that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a wonderful day, even though we are in mourning, we're in prayer, our heart goes out to the uh, parents, students, teachers, and faculty, and all who are associated with the Appalachian School in Winder, Georgia, where four lives were taken, two students and two teachers, and uh, by a 14-year-old um, uh, student, uh, my Lord, we need prayer as never before, and we're praying for uh, the people there, and we're praying for our nation. Now, I'll tell you what we need as never before. We need revival, and as a nation, we need to turn back to the God of the Bible. Now, when these things happen, the question is always, where is God? I mean, that question is asked by people who don't acknowledge God at all in any other aspect of their lives. If the plane lands uh, safely and someone says, thank God for another great flight and a great landing, there's always someone who will say, well, what does God have to do with it? But now if the plane crash, they want to know why did God let this happen? I believe that these things are happening in the land today because of what the Word of God says. The Word of God teaches that in the last days there will be perilous times because since perilous times would come because people would first and foremost be consumed with themselves. Lovers of pleasure, lovers of money, and uh, uh, lovers of self. And as never before, we need to turn to the God of the Bible. Preachers need to preach. Preach it from their pulpits. We need to live it in everyday life. We need to talk about the Lord. And we need to go back to something that is fundamental about God. And that is this. Our God is a deliverer. Last Sunday, I preached a message concerning Christ, our deliverer. And uh, uh, on last uh, a Tuesday night, I was here at the church, and I was invited by the women's uh, department of our church, my wife heads that department, to pray our annual prayer that we, the men, pray over our women. We pray for their protection. We pray for their health. We pray for their, their mental capacity. We pray for uh, the women's children. We pray for our women. We pray that God will anoint them and keep them and cause his face to ever shine upon them. The women play a powerful role in the ministry of the upper room. The truth is that women play a powerful role in the move of God throughout the world. And, uh, and I'm praying that God will keep our women, that God will continue to bless. We prayed and we talked about our, our supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae, our district missionary, uh, district missionary, Margaret Mose, uh, my wife, uh, Pamela, who is the uh, uh, the uh, vice president of our ministry, she's over our women's department. She's my wife, and she's doing a tremendous job. We're praying for women, and I want you to know, near and far, we pray for women, near and far. Women, we're praying for you. We pray that God will continue to bless and keep our national supervisor, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, and all of the women of our great church and of the kingdom of the world, and for the women who are lost that God would save and that God would deliver. But uh, in praying for the women, it, it does not escape me that men and women need deliverance. We need to turn to the Lord as never before. We need God to save our sons, save our husbands, save our men. Oh, God, send deliverance. And then there's this passage of comfort that comforts me greatly, and I wanted to read it. I felt led of the Lord to read this to you today, and I believe that it will add a measure of comfort to your heart if you believe it, and it, and it deals with uh, the things that God specializes in, the things that the God of the Bible knows how to do like no one 
else. And the Bible says this in second uh, Peter chapter number two and verse number nine. I love it. I love it. I love it. It says the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows how to deliver the godly. And the context was how God got, got Lot out of Sodom. God delivered him. It, it deals with how even in the old world, all were destroyed. But in Noah's day, God saved eight souls. He knew how to deliver enough people to keep the human race going. He delivered Lot out of Sodom. And if God knew how to, uh, knows how to deliver uh, a lot, knows how to deliver those souls in the days of Noah, if God knows how to do these things, my friends, God knows how to deliver you. Just stay godly. Just serve him. Walk up right before him. Do what is right. And the Lord will bless you every time. Tonight, I'm going to uh, be continuing uh, on this theme, dealing with God's ability to deliver. And I want you to meet me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for <laughs> Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. And my prayer is that everyone walks out of service. Those who stream you when you go off, when, when our time is up, when our time tonight that we're going to spend together is spent. I want you to be able to say to yourself, he is a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. Even in, now listen to me, even in the toughest of times, even when society is going haywire like the society in which we live, God is still able to deliver. And it shows also that God is not unfair, even in allowing the atrocities and the things that take place in society. When people ask me, why did God allow this? Or why did God allow that? Why this school shooting? Why this? Why uh, 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 that? Uh, I, my response is always, I wonder why these things do not happen more often. When you consider how men have turned their backs on the Lord, of course, a 14-year-old will, will take a gun and gun down four innocent people in a society where we celebrate, where we celebrate the taking of human lives, where even the fruit of the womb is no longer precious. During the convention last week, I, one would think that it was a planned parenthood a political convention because every speaker, every speaker who had a major speak uh, opportunity to speak on the platform, all of them without failure included abortion and uh, their push for it in their speech. They, 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 now, now you had to know what you were listening to. They used flowery speech such as a woman's health choice or women's reproductive rights, or some garbage like that, uh, women's health issues. I'm for women's health. And we've gone to the point now, to the extreme in this country, where commercials, I don't know if the commercials are being shown in your area, but in North Carolina, the airways are flooded with commercials where girls, young girls, lead out by saying, I'm not old enough to vote yet or I'm not yet old enough to vote. And they're using, these, these people are wicked. Gary, they're just diabolical. They're using girls, little dummies, little airheads, little people with their minds full of mush, brains still developing, uh, don't know what they're talking about, uh, 
paid probably to do it or put up by their parents. Um, their worldview hadn't been formed yet. If you're not old enough to vote, sit down. Go somewhere, sit down and learn what the issues are actually all about. I mean, they get the whole commercial wrong, uh, talking about the politician who ended Roe v. Wade when it wasn't a politician. It was the Supreme Court who reversed Roe v. Wade, which was bad law in the first place. Which I, I wish, now I'm going to be honest and I'm going off the air, I'm going, on, I'm going off the air. I wish that the reversal of Roe v. Wade would have done what some of these liars are saying that it did. They got people thinking that it has ended abortion in this country. Man, I wish it would have. Uh, that, uh, oh, now it is just, it's done this, it's done that. When the truth is, the reversal of Roe v. Wade was simply sending the decision back to the states, allowing each state to decide on their uh, laws with regards to the killing of the unborn. Let each state decide. But the way it is being uh, talked about, you would think that it ended abortion altogether. And again, I wish that it would have, but it didn't. The reality of it is, is that it didn't. And people are being lied to. Uh, women are being made to feel like you're losing certain rights and all that kind of stuff. Thank God for godly women who still feel like women used to feel. In times past, the mother uh, would do anything to save her child to save her baby, to save the fruit of her womb. Now they go in and uh, and they go into these clinics and Garrity tell me that the one that was uh, that they were using uh, during uh, a certain convention a couple of weeks ago that um, that uh, uh, that the, the ladies who were getting the abortion or getting the abortion pill or whatever, that the people who were issuing this death never really even looked at him, never really made eye contact, never. And I know this from my years of working at uh, the clinics that when you're in there waiting your turn, they treat you like an assembly line. You're not a person. You're not being loved, cared, cared for, talked to. Uh, they're making eye contact with you. The surgeon who comes in, the deaf dealer, he doesn't look at that that young, frightened young lady uh, lying there on that bed, making a decision, a personal decision in many cases, a painful decision in many cases, not all. Cause there are those who lay there and say, hey, doc, get it over with, move as fast as you can. I got somewhere to go. But there are others who are struggling. Some are lying there because their boyfriends have made them. The guy has threatened them. She wants to keep her baby. But oh no, she's afraid that he will uh, be violent toward her. And these are cases that I know about. Let me, you see, because we've been involved in this fight. And if you've never been involved in the fight, then you can't speak to it from a position of strength. You have to at least go down uh, to a clinic and see what go on. Do your homework. Find out how wicked this is and how women are treated like they're on an assembly line. And more often than not, when they walk out, especially the clinic, where we fought and the, she, she, she's gone through with the abortion. The clinic has gotten their money. They have no more use for her. She walks out. She's in pain. She's made this personal decision. She feels horrible. And she discovers that the only loving arms the only arms of love that are reaching out for her are the arms attached to the very people who were saying to her as she went into the clinic, let the baby live. Let the baby live. Now to drown us out and those voices, the clinic workers said these are kooks. 
These are arrogant people. These are judgmental church folk. These people are crazy. These people are MAGA. Or whatever you want to say about us. Don't listen to them. But, but after she has gone through with it, she finds those same people who fought to try to save her baby, she finds out that we still love her. That she is for whom Christ died and that Jesus will forgive her and Jesus will put her heart back together and Jesus will give her strength to carry on. And that if she lives for the Lord, that someday she'll see her baby again because she'll live the rest of her life knowing she won't forget that death date that was artificially given. And over time, as, 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 as the years roll on, many times it's not mentioned, it's not talked about, but they keep up with the years. My baby would have been three years old today, so forth and so on. So when, you, when we're in a country, and I'm wrapping this up, I've gone too long, but when we're, when we're in a country where we can do this day in and day out, and we all sleep good at night. And uh, uh, the nation is divided on it. And you even have religious people who, and I'm harping on this, and I'm going to stay on it. Religious people, people who name the name of Christ, who aren't ashamed to show their face, to take pictures, to post pictures, to pose with the most pro-abortion crowd, most pro-abortion candidates in the history of this country. At least back in the days of Bill Clinton in the 90s, he said, I want to keep abortion safe, legal, but rare. They've gone from safe, legal, uh, but rare to on demand up to the day of birth. And if the child somehow survives the abortion, do not give it sustenance. Do not let it live. Let the baby starve to death. And yet sanctified people can know this, and I know you know because we've told you, and you've done your homework, can know this and still line up and take pictures and stand beside people who are for this heinous, godless act. And we wonder why. We wonder why there are school shootings. We wonder why students' lives are no longer precious. They're not valuable. Well, you can't be valuable to someone, to some deranged person, to some troubled person. You can't be but so valuable if you're in high school and everybody in high school have done something wrong, have made a mistake, have sinned. There are no perfect teachers, although these teachers did not deserve to be shot and killed. Students did not deserve to be killed. I'm headed somewhere with this. These are good people. No one deserves this. But I tell you what, no matter how innocent these victims were, no matter how innocent you and I may be, we're not as innocent today as we were when we were in the womb. And yet we're killing the most innocent of us. And I said some 30 years ago, and Brother Gary, we were at our Lake Willow Road location at that time. I said then, if human life in the womb is not sacred, my words were, you seniors, you mothers, you senior citizens better look out because if the purest amongst us is no longer sacred, then there will be no respect for the seniors. And this is the time that we're living in. But that's good news.
God knows how to deliver. And let's turn to him. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.